beautiful beach in Svaba this morning, surrounded by Arctic landscape, Arctic wildlife. But what really caught my attention is this fantastic piece of driftwood. First I thought it was just a log with the remains of the roots. But then I looked more closely and I actually found that this has been worked by people in the past who put in as many as 12 different wooden nails. As a historian and archaeologist, I love finding these unexpected pieces of human activity in this landscape. And this is what brought me here. I first came here in 2008 as a historian and archaeologist to look at British mining on the islands. I fell in love with the ruggedness, the Arctic feel, the atmosphere. But of course, during my field work, I had to also look at the archaeological remains of old mines and exploration landscapes. Since then, I changed direction from mining history and industrial archaeology to go more in the direction of historical ecology. I'm now extremely interested in the 420 years of hunting in these islands, hunting for whales, walrus, polar bears and arctic fox, and also for reindeer. And I'm wondering, is it possible to find the data, find the catch data of 420 years and retrace the steps then bringing it all forward again and looking at the, at the impact this hunting had on the environment and what we're seeing now essentially. What happened over these four centuries and what are we looking at today? These polar bears that are now roaming here, are they the last remains or is the population actually recovering? Wouldn't that be fascinating? And it would be of help too. Because I think if I as a historian and archaeologist find this data, create time depth, then I can inform ecosystem management and those who are interested in conserving this polar landscape in the dwindling ice, times of Arctic warming, for a future. Interestingly, that would mean bringing back the Greenland whales, for instance, the bowheads. If that happened, they would then feed on the plankton that now the bird life is feeding on. Would that reduce the birds? Well, nobody really knows. And we are here looking at walrus coming back, claiming their beaches. Are they doing this because the sea ice is decreasing? Or are they doing this because they, having been hunted, are now increasing in numbers again? So it's a gray zone. Hunting stopped, the animals are coming back. But Arctic warming is happening. happening. What does that mean? These questions I want to answer by looking at whalers' logbooks, old historical documents in the archives in different European countries, Norway, Germany, the Netherlands, but also by doing fieldwork, looking at old hunting stations, counting, surveying, measuring in the bone remains, for instance, of old walrus graveyards, but then also looking at zoological uh, collections in the museums. The Svalbard Museum in Longyearbyen has a wonderful zooarchaeological collection, but it hasn't been studied from the point of hunting history, from the point of really quantifying the remains. I'm always a little bit nervous about being in Svalbard, because Svalbard, as beautiful as it is, is also polar bear country. Doing field work in polar bear country is difficult. You never know where one is going to pop up. I'm just a visitor here. We do take precautions. I have a flare gun. I have the gun as well. But ideally, we'd see each other from a distance and just walk different directions. The point I really want to make is that, as a historian and archaeologist, I'm in a position to give time depth and reflect on a past that will show us a way for the future.